All right, everyone, hope you're well. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about these Quasar Science Tubes. I've bought a few of these recently, and now I'm looking at the best way to power them, because unfortunately when you get these, the actual length of the wire that you get is pretty pathetic. Now I know the, the price of these tubes is relatively inexpensive, if you live in the US, but if you live outside of the US, in Europe uh, or anywhere else for that matter, the price becomes more expensive and 4 foot, 300 Kelvin, two, runs off 240 volts, right? So this is the plug that came with it and it's fat and big and chunky and the wire that you get is ridiculously small so the only way to power this is to have some kind of connector and the only thing I've managed to find so far is this connector that goes into here right now instantly you've got this big fat brick brick of a uh, of a connection and um, when you've seen the videos where people have use these in the background almost like as practical lights as uh, effect lights part of the part of the shoot they're not hidden they're visible uh, and let's say they're pinned to a wall for example um, what you've got now to contend with in my case uh, which is how I intend to use them as well like have them in the scene is you've got this really big fat connector here Whereas when I've seen them on other videos, the connector that it comes with uh, from the US is a very small, thin version and uh, it's far less, far less obvious as, as this one is. Now, the colour beside, I will probably get uh, try and find some black ones, but I've not been able to. I might even just spray these black. The issue that I'm going to have, which I can already see, is hiding this thing. Now let's say I've got this on a wall um, and I've got it mounted to a wall using some clips. This is going to have to run down the wall and this part is going to be really obvious. It's going to be really easily seen um, unless it's very low key lighting in the background. It's, it's really dark then I could probably get away with hiding this. Alternatively, if I have the light this way and it's on some kind of uh, light stand, I'd have to try and hide this behind the light stand and have it hidden out of the way again. Maybe once it's black and it's in the background, it might not be visible as such. But anyway, it's a bit clunky, but it does work. So. I've then had to get out some wire and create my own line which will take it to a um, standard UK style 3 pin 240 50 volt plug but I couldn't find any of the wire in black because where I live at the moment it's, uh, you'd be lucky to find anything electrical that you need properly without having to cross the whole country um, I've had to use some black insulation tape and make this white wire black. So it's very crude at the moment and it's not something I'm particularly happy about. I am hoping I'll be able to find some black thick wire. Um, and then we go into this plug. All right, so that's pretty, f yeah, that, that, that's just how it is. That's what I've managed to get so far. And that's took me a while to get these bits. Now, these are dimmable, right? So I went on the internet looking for options to dim and this one came up on one of the forums and I bought these on Amazon, they're relatively cheap, they are Ventec and they're, they're quite straightforward, you've got a full switch, an off switch and, weight, and a variable switch which are like dim. The issue is you can't get down to a very low dim, it, will, it probably only starts at like 50% and then it goes upwards. So, you know, probably most of the time, if these are gonna be background lights, I probably have these blasting full anyway, but you can't dim these 
uh, fully with this dimmer. So if you're thinking about getting this dimmer and you want full control, don't. Then I went on another forum and these were recommended, these inline dimmers, which are just, um, the make is Leviton or Leviton, tabletop dimmer lamp. Issue with this is the bloody connector. I mean, look at that as a connector. You've got this which seems straightforward. So initially what I would have to do, I have to go from here into this plug and then adapter from this plug into that plug and then an adapter which I've not been able to find in the country yet which will allow this connector which is weird because it's this end has got a really odd shape it's not the same kind of long rectangle it's got these little notches they don't go into anything and then you'd have to plug that into the mains and then hope it works and I've not been able to find anything that allows me to even use this. So I've got four of these and I can't use them. I've got four of these and I can use them. However, you know, you really have to, um, you can't get full dimming. And also these are bulky, fat and bulky as anything. They're even they're bigger than the, than the unit, but you can see how big this unit is when you compare it to that. So at the moment, Powering these options, I've not got many good options in all honesty. So far, nothing that I'm really happy with, nothing slick and kind of, you know, clean and efficient. It's all a bit chunky. In terms of mounting these, I've found a few different ways to mount them. Um, I've got a few different clamp types. Uh, I've got a few custom made clamps and then I've also got the, um, the T8 clips that you can buy from Quasar Science and I'm going to be setting up I've actually found some IKEA floor lamps, which are very cheap. They have a nice round base and they have one single metal shaft um, onto which I would actually gaffer tape or clip these onto that shaft. And then you've got a really nice single freestanding um, light tube, which could look pretty sick. So I've got some really cool video ideas planned to use these lights. I've got two of these 300 Kelvin T8 lamps, four foot, so I've got two of these, here's one, here's the other. I've got four uh, 5600K T8, so they are the double the size of these, obviously, because this is two foot. I've got four of those and they're 5600K, and then I've got two um, QLED crossfade four foot tubes as well which will obviously give me everything from like 300 to 6,000 Kelvin. You get a really nice orange and a really nice blue light from those. I've got two of those uh, and they're quite good. I am planning um, on buying another, another four T8 um, tubes, which will be the 5600K. And I'm planning on purchasing um, at least another, another another two of these smaller ones um, at 300k which will allow me to do some stuff with just warm light and I'm also planning on binging out on some uh, crossfade tubes um, but actually going with four four foot crossfade tubes um, and probably throwing in a couple of RGB tubes um, only because I've got quite a few projects planned they're personal projects, uh, they are things that I'm going to do which are not client based, I'm going to be funding them myself, but they are going to be uh, unique to my portfolio, they're going to be some really awesome stuff and the lights will be great because I know once I've got them and I've shot with them, people will want to use them and I'll be able to rent them out as well and make some money back off them. Uh, anyway, I'm going to be making a video soon about lighting and um, going into purchasing, investing quite a lot of money, around about, I'd say $6,000 equivalent into lighting gear, LED lighting gear, the choices I'm going to be making um, and why I'm going for those lights. Uh, I'm a photographer uh, and I've got a lot of photography, lighting, flash kits with modifiers and everything, so spent a lot of money on that. But in terms of LED light for video, I've not got lots. I've only got a couple of lights at the moment that I'm using and the quasars that I've recently got. But on top of that, I'm going to be adding a whole arsenal of additional lights from 
flexible LED panels through to uh, Fresnels and uh, and a whole host of other things that allow that will allow me great flexibility on uh, on a project. Um, and I'll be t- telling you why I'm not going down the Aperture route um, because of a ex- couple of experiences I've had with Aperture products, both of which have left me quite annoyed at the brand. Um, yeah, good, 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 good lights in the sense that there's a good range. Reliability though, no, not, not really up to scratch. Anyway, that's going to be another video. I'm going to leave it there. If you've got any other suggestions, if you've got any other recommendations for dimmers or switches or anything else um, for you guys that are more experienced in using these, then please chuck a comment below. I'm sure it will be very helpful for me. Other than that, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I've got a lot more stuff coming in terms of how I'm going to use these lights and setting them up. And uh, watch out for some cool stuff. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you next time.